Hello and welcome to part 2 of the basics tutorial for iMovie 11. This tutorial also works in iMovie 09. Just a quick refresher of what we talked about last time. We talked about going into iMovie, clicking preferences, and clicking on the general tab, and clicking show advanced tools box. We also talked about how to make sure your videos are properly saved in iMovie so you don't accidentally lose footage. Just right click, reveal in finder, and make sure your file and make sure your file is coming from an iMovie event folder. We also talked about seeing more frames per second using this little gadget here and what each of the windows are. In this tutorial we'll be going over some of the more advanced features but not too advanced but just basically how to use them. So let's talk about this little pile of gadgets here. The music note is how you would add sound effects. Adding sound comes directly from your iTunes library. So make sure your iTunes library is up to date. I actually have a specific playlist just called sound effects. And I have names for all my sound effects. So whatever is in here is going to be available to me in iMovie. After I pick a specific playlist, I can search. Maybe I want a machine gun. There we go. We can double click and listen to it. I have sound turned off so it doesn't interrupt the tutorial. Once you find a sound effect you like, click on the little music sheet right here and you can drag it any way you want. Now for me, we have a light machine gun footage here. So I'm just gonna, once I find the exact spot I want my sound effect to begin, I just let go. And we have some sound effect. And I'm gonna zoom in using this frames per second thing. Now here's our sound effect. We can also further modify our sound effect. If you double click on it, you have two tabs, the audio tab and the clip tab. The audio tab allows you to increase and decrease the volume of your sound. This is what iMovie 11 does fantastic over iMovie 09. There's a lot more audio options. There are other tutorials out there on how to specifically use these, but they're pretty much self-explanatory. If you click on clip, you can even add all these other audio effects. You could add an echo, you could add other things like that. You could make it sound like the audio is coming through a telephone, if the audio is in a small room or in a large room. You can change the pitch of the audio up or down. If you leave your mouse over the audio effect, it'll play your audio in a loop so you can hear its different capabilities. For example, since this is in the forest, I probably want to add some kind of echo effect. Now this is the most important part about audio. If you have iMovie open and you modify your iTunes library slightly, then you go back into iMovie, your library of sound effects in iMovie will not be up to date. You need to exit out of iMovie and then reopen iMovie and the iMovie sound effects library will be up to date and will coincide with your iTunes library. So just remember that. That's about the audio tab. Now this second tab here is compatible with Photo Booth. The first one was compatible with iMovies. The second one is Photo Booth. I find it basically useless. If you're an expert in Photo Booth, feel free to use the tab similarly. But for me, normally I just find a photo, click on the photo I like, I hit the space bar to get a little preview of it, and then I just drag it right into my iMovie project. The little green bar represents where the photo is going to end up. Now remember, every time you add in a photo, iMovie adds that Ken Burns effect. Clicking on the little gear, clicking cropping Ken Burns and rotation, will allow you to get rid of the Ken Burns effect. The third tab here is your Titles tab. These are these can range from opening credits to ending credits 
to the fancy Star Wars intro. You have a variety here. Basically what you do is you find one you like, click on it, drag it over, put it where you want. You can select your background for it, and then you have your little title slide here. It's already animated for you. If you want to edit the text, you just click on this little blue bar here. And you can change the header and the footer. Credits are done similarly, also the Star Wars intro. You can click on the little title here and change on the type you want as well. Now, let's say you have a photo background you would like to use, but your title is, but you're not given the correct color. Well, once you just modify your title how you want, click on the little blue, and you can drag it over to where you want. Then you can delete your older footage. This other one here is the transition slide. This is to transform between two different videos that are only one layer though. If you don't remember what I mean by one layer, feel free to watch my previous tutorial. So you just find one you like, drag it and drop it, and put it between two files that are only one layer long. And as you can see, now we have a little transition between the two video footage. If you double click on this, or use the little gear, once again you can modify the transition you'd like to use. And this last tab here is is not as important. You just drag and drop the effect you want. You can have your locations and things like that. This is These can be kind of nifty, fun transitions if you want. Some nice pile of movie assets you have. And that's basically that pile of buttons there. And now let's briefly talk about using uh, some of the other features when you're doing multiple layers in iMovie. So here the machine gun's firing. So I'm going to add my special effect. Select the part I want. I pretty much want to use the whole thing. I'm dragging this from my event library into my project. I'm just going to look for the correct frame where I'm pulling the trigger. I can see that I'm having a little trouble here, so I'm going to use this little button here to change the frames per second. Just drag this, and there we go. Now when I let go, I have all these options. They're fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to go through briefly what they all do. If I click replace, it just pretty much deletes the current footage and puts in the footage I, am, I have currently selected. If you click replace from start, it'll overlap the footage from the beginning with the footage I have selected. Replace from end, same thing, except from the back of the footage. Replace at playhead will just insert my footage overlapping what is currently there. Insert will split the current footage in two chunks and place the footage I have selected right where my cursor is. If I just want to import the audio, I got this button here. Cutaway will do a double layer. There's a, there's a complicated and some fancy ways. This one's going to need its own tutorial. Picture in picture is what you will tend to use the most. I'm going to do a full tutorial on that. Side by side can be kind of handy. It puts the two footage next to each other. If your person is filmed on a green background or blue background using these two. And then you can click cancel. For me, I'm just going to use picture in picture for now. So you can see my picture is right here. I can grab this and make it bigger. I can make it smaller. You have to be sure that it's not coming default with a Ken Burns effect. So I'm just going to click that. There you go. It's under crop. Also, my muzzle flash is the incorrect way. So if I double click on it, once again, I have all the same options as a video. I can click on video effect. And the one I plan on using is flip. You have to remember that you can only apply one of these at a time. Now my muzzle flash is the correct direction. I can drag it almost to the correct spot, but not quite. So another little trick, clicking, cropping, and rotation. I can actually click the crop button and crop out 
the chunks I don't want. And as I continue to do this, I'll get closer and closer to what I want. As the crop box gets smaller, your image gets bigger. And there we go. It's lined up pretty close. I can get the rest of the way using these arrows now. I'm going to do three or four different tutorials on muzzle flashes in iMovie. So if you plan on doing those special effects, subscribe so you don't miss it. So, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I make an iMovie tutorial every two weeks. Make sure you hit like so other knows this is a good tutorial. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates that way. Make sure to check out the description. I put a lot of work into the description. It provides a nice outline for the tutorial. Frequently asked questions are answered in there. If your question is not answered in the description, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to respond. If you have a special effects request, also post that as a comment. So once again, thanks for subscribing. I look forward to helping you with your movies and your future projects.